Hey guys, Ben Plays here. Welcome to another episode of The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles with my friends. Stay driven. Golden Knight. Alright, back into the game we go. Things are getting exciting. Oh, press the Z button to go back. Derp. <laughs> Alright. 9th of January, SS Beria, Miss Pavlova's cabin. Somehow the door to the cabin we were in ended up bolted after we made an emergency stop. Susato-san took a deep breath and gently slid back the bolt. Did one of you open a door just now, or was that the game sound effect? That was the game. You! What are you doing in Miss Pavlova's quarters? <clears throat> ah, you both look unhurt. Very good. Yes, we're fine, thank you. What on earth happened? We heard something about how we were going to collide with another ship. <clears throat> ah, yes, it appears to have been a false report, though. Oh, how did that happen? Gross negligence. There's a dense fog outside, so it's extremely difficult to see. Someone must have thought he saw a ship ahead. <coughs> this person obviously triggered the alarm, and that's why we made an emergency stop. Everything is chaos. Passengers are screaming. Crew are running everywhere. The first class area is the only quiet part of the ship at the moment. Oh, I see. Hi, no. Someone triggered the alarm? Does that mean that someone pressed that button outside? Ah, you wicked intruder! Dressed in all black! You are the devil! Sorry, me? I've been called a lot of things before, but devil is a first. You opened my traveling case. How could you? Mm -hmm. What? No, no, we didn't touch it. That's right, Miss Plavilova. It was already open when we came into your cabin. So it was. Inspector. <laughs> yeah, um, yes. Arrest this man. I know he did it. How could I say no to those dead eyes? He is a criminal! It is not enough that he has killed the man. Da! And he is stowaway as well! If Vixen promises not to steal chicken, do you believe? Ugh. Take him away! He is a trespasser as well as everything else! Stowing away! Trespassing, killing. She is right. You are devil. It doesn't look good, does it? No offense, Golden. We both have terrible Russian accents. <laughs> yeah. Mine's not that much better. I'll tell you. There is cell below deck. Throw him in. <laughs> no, your your Russian accent yesterday was better than today. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Tomorrow we dock in Hong Kong. Then we give you straight to police. Wait, a cell? 
I feel like I had the perfect Russian accent for like two sentences Please, there, Inspector and then I lost Hosanaga. it again. Please, Inspector Hosanaga, is there nothing you can do? This is a Russian vessel. I really have no jurisdiction here. After my last efforts to appeal to the captain's good nature, I think I'm out of options. <laughs> this is terrible. This is a real crisis. I've got to find a solution. Immediately! Well, you can't move anywhere, so... Well, I mean, I could have, but... Who do you want to talk to? I think we need to talk to her? I was gonna say that too, because, like, reading a book going left to right. Okay. Miss Pavlova, can I... Get out! Listen, I'm sorry that we snuck in here without your permission, but... Get out, no! We just needed to investigate in here to help understand. I don't know how to uh, that. It's no use. She's not going to listen. I need to find someone who will. Send me a screenshot. I'll send it to my Russian friend and she can translate it. Please, just give me a little more time. I do nothing for you. Except show you way to ship's prison cell. Ah, thanks, but no thanks. But I'm innocent! I didn't kill anyone! And trespassing? And stowing away? Well, um, you know, sometimes life can lead you down some unusual avenues, and well... <laughs> Enough! You are guilty! Ship's cell is only a place fit for you. Come on, there has to be someone, some savior to rescue me from this crisis. Huh. Hosanaga, are you gonna be my savior? <clears throat> You've got yourself into a difficult situation here. By entering this cabin uninvited, I mean. Hmm. Sorry, I, I was just so desperate to find a clue. I'm afraid there's really nothing more that I can do to help you, no matter how many liberties I take. If I push my luck any further, a punch to the face will be the least of my worries. I'm really sorry. I have to take responsibility for giving you the freedom to investigate Miss Pavlova's cabin. Now that this has happened, I'll have to report to the captain at once. I really need some help here. I need a savior to rescue me from this crisis. Uh. Let me guess. Oh, what ah! the heck? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright, Ben, Ben. Bourbon moment! <laughs> alright, here we go. <laughs> He's always hanging around. What the heck? Literally, in this, uh, in this particular moment. Alright, listen to uh, this. Uh. I, I was being literal, it was a pun. What the? What are you doing up there? What? <laughs> <laughs> Why is he wearing the crown? <laughs> have we had any... Have we had any what's yet in the first five episodes? Naturally, I was realizing what a weight of 20,000 rubles feels like on one's head. Have I not told you that as a detective it is my business to know what other people do not with my Uri Anje glasses? This isn't mere tomfoolery, my boy. Oh, no, no, no. Um, well, why were you hanging from that hook before then? For fun, obviously. Isn't it obvious? To properly assess the weight of the 20,000 rubles, naturally. Okay, you your logic... Alarm. I wish to determine if it would bend that conceited looking hook on the wall, so full of brag and bound. Ah, uh, I never know whether to take this man seriously or not. Ah, 
you again, the great detective. I had to turn my mouse pad off again. Mm. Ah, Inspector, I confess that I have been looking for you. Hm. I have something to report to you most urgently. Well, you might try looking for me somewhere <laughs> other than a hook on the wall next time. But this to report. Speak! <laughs> An urgent report from a great detective can mean but one thing. Juan spacebar work. Yes. The case of the curious murder that took place last night here on this vessel, the steamship barrier, has been solved by me, naturally. Mm -hmm. What? Really? Yes, I have eliminated all other possibilities. No other explanations exist. So, allow me to illuminate all your minds. That's for sure. For I am about to reveal my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to the case. Ha, you have solved it? Even Hedgehog understands this case. Um... No way, man. I don't understand a thing. <laughs> that, you, you said what I was gonna say. I'm like, <laughs> apparently I'm dumber than a hedgehog. Alright. We all know who is responsible for killing Student Boy this morning when we found criminal in wardrobe. Oh, you're still under that assumption. It is a stowaway, and he has handcuffs to prove it. I should have seen that coming. I didn't do it! The trouble is, there doesn't appear to be anyone else who could have killed the victim. Because, as everyone knows, the cabin door was bolted shut from the inside. That means the culprit must be someone who is inside the cabin. Yes, it's what's called the locked room mystery in detective stories. Da! Locked room. That is point. Could someone have come through this, the ventilator? The room was locked? Well, I can't deny that. There's no way the bolt could have been drawn across from outside the cabin. You are quite mistaken. The cabin next door is not a so-called locked room at all. What? Yeah. Oh yes, there is another entrance. An entrance used last night by the culprit in order to gain access to the cabin despite the bolted door. What other entrance? We never discovered of one. I'm arguing with myself and losing. Why, it gapes open mouth even as you would speak. The ventilator man! The ventilator? Man. Gah, ha, 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 ha. You think this is funny? I cannot even put my arm through that hole. That's because your arms are as thick as tree trunks. <laughs> the only thing you should be reckless with is that tree trunk we want. You're suggesting that the culprit entered and left the victim's cabin through that tiny opening? It's not possible! Preposterous! Ah, but it is. And last night, the victim even witnessed the intruder in the act of passing through the ventilator. Mr. Sholmes, do you mean... Are you referring to the words Kazuma-sama wrote in his diary? 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. 1.35 a.m. What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Take a shot every time they say this. Every time they read that. I'd rather not. 
<laughs> Precisely, my dear madam. <laughs> Die of alcohol <laughs> poisoning. <laughs> yeah, also, I'm on a low carb diet, so my tolerance is kind of trash. But what does it mean? I can't drink. What is a speckled hand? I was kidding anyway, I can't drink because of my meds, neither can Golden Knight, but. Bummer. Yeah. The answer to that particular conundrum is in this very cabin. Man, I misplay my rogue. Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing? Dancing. Shadow boxing. He's doing the Manderville. There is a distinct element of danger, but if they're not, I am ready! What I am about to expose for you will shock you to your cause. Please keep your pants on. Behold! Chia! Oh, what the? What was that? I don't think that was Sean it... that said that. What the? Hey! What? It's a scaly boy! What? It's a scaly boy! I knew it. It has to do with uh, one of Sherlock Holmes' mysteries. Uh, it was the, the very first one they did, land. and uh, they they found a snake. Yeah, it was actually the first Sherlock Holmes story I ever read back in school. It was the very first Sherlock Holmes mystery. No, it wasn't. It was wasn't like one it? Of the last. It was like one of the last. It was one of the last. No, ones? no, no. The um, I thought it was the first one. Study in Scarlet was the first one. Okay. Well, it was one of them. It, 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 they they found out uh, a snake was the perpetrator because they couldn't figure out what the speckled band was, and then they found the snake. Mm. Well, technically speaking, Grimsby Roylott was the was the killer because he made the snake do the killing. The, the snake was the murder weapon, not the killer. Any road. Yeah. Allow me to introduce you all to the band, the speckled band, the Deutsche Band. A, sn a snake? It doesn't look- it doesn't look like speckles, though. Okay. Yeah, the scales can look like speckles. Did I miss a line? Indubitably! No, I don't think you did. No. A snake? Yeah. Dot 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 and I've taken the liberty of adding another dot. Um, Mr. Sholmes, just one thing. And in one minute. Pray, what troubles you? Well, that snake isn't really speckled, is it? Thank you. It looks more stripy, it looks more stripy wouldn't you say? Hmm? <laughs> 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 Yes, you're right. I think in this case you'd have to call it the striped band, wouldn't you? It's like a green coral snake or something. Hmm, dot 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 of deduction. <laughs> you both see and observe with distinction, however. Do you not think? That is precisely the trap into which the culprit wishes you to fall? Um, I don't know. Oh my goodness, really? It's- it's a trap? It's a trap! How exactly? It's a trap! I think perhaps it is time that I explain the intricacies of my train of thought. Are you ready, Miss Pavlova? Oh, Pavlov! I'm sorry for the young man who died, but that is all. His death is nothing to do with me. The whole thing is nothing to do with me. Uh, ow. I still stuck stroking off. There are two conclusions that I have drawn from the facts. Number one! Number one! Engage! Last night, your friend infiltrated the victim's cabin. Ah. Uh. And number two, that same friend was responsible for the victim losing his life. Stop it, you're not the coward. No. Except he wasn't killed by a snake bite. She's turned his point as a bowl of rice again. 
think he's supposed to be a constrictor. Oh shit. Sholmes must be right, he's hit the nail on the head. <laughs> ah, this young woman's friend killed Mr. Asogi? Well, it fits. Russian ethic of I, I, I have no player. clue what to do with this line. Dot. Just a bunch of dots and some vodka. It looks like he can't speak with that snake coiled around his head. Are we gonna have to cross-examine the snake? Oh god. <laughs> I would advise as little movement as possible, Mr. Seaman. You wouldn't want the fangs of that long friend in your neck. So, everyone, let us begin. Herlock Jones is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Oh, the dance of deduction. Here we go. You know what? I've actually got a pipe in my car. Maybe I should get it as a prop. <laughs> Intruder's identity. How do you get in? Intruder window. Miss Pavlova, moments ago you claimed the following. His death is nothing to do with me. This whole thing is nothing to do with me. Yet you cannot deceive yourself. Yes. When you recall those horrid events, your aching heart smarts with pain. Your what? Aching heart. The snake's bit hurt. No, I know, but like... Never mind. And it is that very pain that evidences your inextricable link to the victim's death. Um, when I... When the question mark comes up on screen from now on, I'm going to question what the, um, what the thing says. Okay. So, we ask, what was the nature of this intruder that stole into the victim's cabin on that portentous night? Why, naturally, it was this friend with which you boarded this vessel, was it not? Ah, as I suspected, another telltale glance. She's like coiling up and curling because she's like scared. Without a doubt, your friend is the writhing servant we see before us. Is it though? And yet, that fact leaves us in a quandary. He has no teeth. He's got no fangs, yeah, he's obviously some kind of boa constructor. The victim's written observations on the night in question tell of a speckled band. Whereas, regrettably, this specimen's markings do not fit that description in any way. What explanation, then, can we give Craig? <coughs> what was the sight that fell upon the victim's eyes last night? No, don't look at me. This has nothing to do with any of this. Oh, but it does. You have to answer the question to this quandary even now, hidden behind your back. Oh. Yes, that which you are trying but failing to conceal. It can only be the snake's slewed skin. No. Sloth. That doesn't look anything like it. Evidently, after this subtle and horrific crime, something, something, something. It shed its original skin. No. You dummy! They don't change their patterns. I don't good. know what you're talking about. Last night, through the ventilator, visible in this cabin, your then speckled friend slid the <laughs> Oh my ball. god, he really does think that the pattern changed. What the hell? <laughs> oh my Christ. <laughs> Using the bell on the other side of the bridge, the servant silently descended into the victim's quarters. In the dim light, it appeared to the young gentleman who was about to lose his life as a speckled band. In summary, the true nature of this friend of yours, which last night infiltrated the scene of the crime, is a rare breed of snake whose markings change each time it slews its skin. Uh huh. One sec. <laughs> slough. According to Google, Please. it's slough. Slow, yeah. so dreadful, we can only imagine it would be found in the deepest depths of India. 
Okay, please tell me this is the only time that we have to. Please tell me there's not a second. No, there's two. No. Come on, this is long. Alright, according to Google, it's slow. Okay. Yeah, I know that. We come to the part of the matter the grim demise of the victim. How did this young man lose his life, and why? According to the data of which I have apprised... Sorry. According to the data of which I have been apprised, it would appear there were no visible signs of injury. <coughs> Your eye got eaten. Oh well. In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by a terrible venom! It doesn't have any fangs! Now, if we take that as a fact... We can reasonably imagine that there remains evidence to affirm it at the scene of the crime. Oh no, could there be... <laughs> yes! An examination of the deceased's body will prove the cause of death conclusively. The almost, but not quite, imperceptible puncture wounds left by the venomous fangs will seal the truth. There was none. Yes, the vestiges of a snake bite delivered by your terrifying friend. First of all, that snake doesn't have any fangs, and even if it did... Those are not animated. This... this makes no sense. To be fair, sometimes snake bites can be hard to find. But... I see where we're going with this. There is no point in feigning ignorance, Miss Pavlova. You used Pavlov's techniques. After the incident, you endeavored to hide everything, didn't you? But now your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place you chose. Ha! That's right. You hid the evidence that links you to the victim's death in the, tra the traveling case. Pokeball, when we first met in this cabin, it came to my attention that your case moved periodically. Watson? Your serpent assassin was restless inside, no doubt. You know, what's sad? Sholmes still doesn't know about Wilson's death. That is pretty sad. You skipped my line. Oh, sorry. It is telling that the victim made a note of low whistling sound that can... Snakes are deaf, you nincompoke! Oh, well, they make that mistake in the original story, too. It is telling that the victim made note of a low whistling sound that he heard minutes before his end. That was signal, was it not? The sound you would use to train your servant friend. Fun fact, they made that exact same error in the original story. Train? Really? Yeah. The fact that snakes were deaf wasn't, like, widely known back when Doyle wrote the story. Oh. Indeed. You'd put the serpent through this ventilator and wait. After a period, you'd summon it back with a whistle. You couldn't know if the animal had done its duty, so you would listen for signs of life next door. Then they might make the same mistake here, too. Uh, if they're trying to homage the story, they might, but they might also say, hey, wait a minute, snakes are deaf. But you said in the time period that the story was written, they didn't know. And this is in the yeah, time period that the however, story was written. I wouldn't be surprised if they metagame the, sh the crap out of it. Okay. If the victim appeared to not have been dispatched, you'd release the snake once more. This is all very Great dumb. Scott. Do you deny this snake has undergone such training? You can't train a snake. It's not true. Having slithered through the ventilator and down the spell cord, the creature needed only to sink its fangs in once. Uh, yeah, that's how the victim in the original story died. And its venom would course through the victim's veins, ending his existence forever. That is the true nature of the speckled band that took the poor young man's life. There can be no doubt, my logic is infallible. Um... <laughs> Your face effect, is foul. it's very fallible. <laughs> very fallible. Bendel Grosso. Thus conclude Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of the speckled band. 
Ah, oh, there's so much wrong with that. Where do we start? All right. <clears throat> oh, look at him. He's so cute. Everyone is speechless. He looks Pavlova. like a harmless garden snake. Yeah. Miss Pavlova has trained her pet snake as a killing machine. Why, her name even is the same as Pavlov. There on the floor, you'll observe a saucer of milk. That's also something the original story got wrong. The promise of food is the key to training any creature. Snakes don't drink milk, bro. Incredible. You've solved the mystery. Amazing! Your great deduction really lives up to its name! I see now why Herlock Sholmes has become such a household name! <laughs> My dear man... It was nothing remarkable. As the Russians say, I could have done it with one left hand. Damn it, now I mixed up their voices again. No. <laughs> No, no, he was way, way too high pitched there. Anyways, could oh. I venture an opinion, Mr. Sholmes? <coughs> He's full of it. Hmm. But of course, what is on your mind? It's just about your deductions. Before some things don't quite make sense to me. I welcome questions as to my method, and will answer both loudly and proudly. Oh, well, good. First of all... <sighs> what am yeah, I doing? You have a book about reptiles, don't you? Snakes are egg-laying creatures, part of the reptile family. You are well informed, madam. And reptiles, um, don't drink milk. And, by the way, Reptile is a class, not a family. Ah! Oh. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Alright. It's really only mammals that like to drink milk, you see. Yeah, on a You must family. milk Nagini! So, I'm not sure it would be possible to train a snake using milk as a reward. Thank you, Susato. No matter. No doubt Miss Pavlova used some other treat to encourage her pet to do her bidding. Milk was mere an example. The logic holds. <coughs> no, it doesn't. Well, there is something else. Snakes have no ears. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> ah! Yeah, so I'm not sure it would really be possible to signal to a snake by whistling. But, madam, what of the tales from Arabia? Have you not heard of the snakes that dance to the sounds of a flute? It's the motion. I think perhaps the performers play their music in time with the snake's natural movements. Oh, I see. I see! No hands, no feet, no ears! These creatures are so inept to be practically useless! But Don't so take it out on the snakes, Mr. Sholmes. Um... There is one other thing. Do you have more? Snakes use the scales on their bellies to propel themselves. So, I'm not really sure that a snake could manage to climb up a flat bell cord like the ones in these cabins. That one... I mean, they can climb trees. Then it should try harder. Please, don't be angry with me, Mr. Sholmes. The point is... Even if the snake had gone through the ventilator to the next door cabin, it couldn't have come back without help. What I'm trying to say... Is your doctor, your doctor sucks is that there are a number of reasons why it's difficult to imagine the snake could have had a part in this. Hmm. Very dejected dots. I've taken the liberty of adding a few dots here. Uh, 
I think we need to step in and help again, Mr. Narahado. Oh no, you don't mean... Yes, we need to modify Mr. Sholm's latest deductions and turn them into the great ones they ought to be. <laughs> is this whole game just gonna be this incompetent fool? Um, so is it gonna be like... Is there even gonna be a trial in this case? I don't know! But I, I, I think that this chapter is just going to be this whole dance thing, and then in future chapters it's gonna be a mix of both. I had a feeling this was coming. Alright, let's give it a try. No, there's no way this chapter is just an investigation. There has to be a trial. Right? It's just a really just long freaking game. It's almost as long as, as critically acclaimed, massively multiplayer online role-playing game Final Fantasy XIV with its free trial all the way up to level 60 with no restrictions on playtime. Just what I was waiting for, Mr. Narahodo. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Nudge, yes, nudge. right. <laughs> so, cast your eyes down to, to your wrists again. Oh, what? Again? What? what? That's a me what. You've done it again. The hands have to go on. Ah, where did they go? Sholmes, you're, you're a terrible uh... detective, but you are a great magician. Yes. I am a great magician. Your clothes are red. I shall see that they're restored after our work is done. I really wish you'd leave them off. <laughs> now, everyone, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Spectacular, spectacular, in no words vernacular. Course so correction. Exciting. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. The audience will jump and cheer. So delighting. It'll run for 50 years. Miss Pavlova, oh, you're um, doing stuff, so I don't think I had to reread that. No, no, you can reread it. It actually Ms. flows. Miss Pavlova, a moment ago, you claimed the following. His death is not to do with me. This whole thing has nothing to do with me. Yet you cannot deceive yourself. Yes, when you recall these horrid events, your aching heart smarts with pain. She does have a pained expression on her face. Hmm. She's looking at her hand. Yes, that's true. She looks as though Kasuma-sama's death is weighing heavily in her mind. Wait, does she have a crush on him? You're not sure Mr. Sholmes has read her quite correctly, is that it? Could there be some other way to interpret her expression then? Oh. Take a moment and really look very closely at Miss Pavlova. Her wrist. Oh! <sighs> Back of her hand. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Ouch. Riches. Oh, Narahada san, look! That looks like a very painful wound. That's why she's always covering her hand. It looks like a scratch made by some kind of small animal. And fairly recently, too. Well, whatever scratched her doesn't appear to be around here. Huh. Okay, but. I I didn't yes. just wanna do the thing. <laughs> yes, when you recall those horrid events, that claw scratch smarts with pain. Indeed. And simple observation reveals that the wound is fresh. Miss <clears throat> Pavlova, did you in fact receive that scratch sometime last night? Uh, when I think about the young man who died next door, I feel so sad. And when I am sad, the pain from the wound is worse. And it is that very pain that evidences your inextricable link to the victim's death. 
So, we ask, what was the nature of this intruder that stole into the victim's cabin on that pretentious night? Why, naturally, it was the friend with which you boarded this vessel, was it not? Ah, as I suspected, another telltale glance. Without doubt, your friend is the writhing serpent we see before us. It was not certain. Seems likely that the scratch mark on the back of Miss Pavlova's hand was made by this friend of hers, doesn't it? Except, snakes don't have claws, do they? No, they don't. They don't even have hands or feet on which claws might grow. Well then, if that snake isn't her pet, what is? What's the true identity of this friend of hers? We should follow her gaze, Narahara-san. That's, That's where we'll find the answer. Sorry. Hmm. Sorry, my phone distracted me. <gasps> That's where the bell came from. I'm calling it right now. Oh. Ah, look at the photograph in this frame. This must be something Miss Pavlova brought with her when she ran away. She's exceptionally beautiful, isn't she? Yes, that's true. But personally, it's the little black creature she's holding that's caught my eye. Maybe we'd better take a closer look at this. Look at this- YES! Look at this photograph! <laughs> friend is the little kitten! Without doubt, your friend is the little kitten we see before us. Ah, yes! The scratch on the back of your hand makes that abundantly clear. Oh no! Oh yeah! The whereabouts of this black kitten isn't clear, but what is clear... ...is that you brought the animal with you when you ran away, didn't you? No! Darka is my best friend. Darka? I couldn't leave her behind. Darko would appear to be a Russian blue. Oh, that's my brain. And yet that fact leaves us in a quandary. The victim's written observations on that night in question tell of a speckled band. Whereas, regrettably... This specimen's marking do not fit that description in any way. <laughs> Nor does the form is... factor now that... Okay. Yeah, like, have you seen a picture of a red and blue? They're actually quite cute. What explanation can we give, pray? What was this sight that fell upon the victim's eyes last night? No, don't look at me. This has nothing to do with any of this. Oh, but it does. You have the answer to this quandary even now. Hidden behind your back. Yes. That which you are trying but failing to conceal. It can only be the snake's slowed skin. Did you see that? She just took something out of her pocket and hid it behind her back. If she just left it in her pocket, no one would ever have known. Oh yes, boys like that are Mr. Sholm's specialty. He's even so cleverly forced her to reveal something. Ever so cleverly. Oh. Ever clever. Whatever. I thought deduction was his specialty, or making me- or maybe making me believe that was a ploy, too. Anyway... I find it hard to believe that this- that's the skin of a snake. In which case, just what is Miss Pavlova hiding behind her back? It's a cat toy. She was trying to get her cat to come back with the cat toy. That's what it looks like, yeah. It looks like, a, it looks like one of those um, floofies on a string. Well, it is speckled, and it is a band, but what is it? it? Seems to be soft and fluffy, a long cloth piece, of course. 
And that looks like a handle at the end. I think it may be a cat's toy. This sort of is common in the West, apparently. How is that a toy for cats? You never own cats... A cat <laughs> cats like to chase the band around and paw at it. Kittens in particular love that sort of play. You only need to wave it in front of them, and they pounce to catch it. <laughs> that sounds positively adorable. You gotta remember the Japanese aren't familiar with too many cats. Yes! What are you time. talking about? They were introduced to Japan in the Yaoi period between 200 BC and 250 AD, and became fashionable as domestic pets during the Heian period of 794 to 1184. 1185, excuse me. Yes, that what thing you were trying but failing to conceal is a cat's toy. Precisely, and the true nature of the now infamous speckled band. Uh. <laughs> and it was this toy that you dangled through the ventilator. Why? The cat buggered off through there. You waited uh. a while round, I presume? Naturally, the victim could not fail to notice it. But why? For what reason? Hmm. My dear boy, there can only be one answer to that. After her feline friend disappeared through the ventilator into the neighboring cabin, Miss Pavlova attempted to use the speckled cat's toy to incite the creature to return. Ah. In summary, the nature of this friend of Miss Pavlova's, which last night infiltrated the scene of the crime, is a blithesome Russian blue breed of cat by the name of Darka. Ah! <laughs> a truly troublesome feline, young Darka is proving to be. She must be caged once found. You will forgive us for borrowing the photograph of your pet, Miss Pavlova. It was after I gave her her food last night. That's when it happened. She scratched the back of my hand and then ran up the biddle cord. Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. If you like my content and you'd like to support me, have a look at my Patreon page, where you can get rewards like joining my Discord server, requesting my next LP, and even guest commentating an episode. Link is in the description down below.